want to say thank you, Lord, for being able to um, give your word this morning. And I thank you, Lord, that you're touching me, you're anointing my mouth, Lord. I just, I don't want to be babbling. I want the words from you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. And I just pray that uh, you guys will understand. Actually, I'll be speaking on Mary. And actually, my title is Highly Favored of God. Mary was highly favored of God when the angel went to her to announce her and ask her to conceive Jesus. He called her that God said that she was highly favored. So to me, his highly favored says she was a favorite. She was God's favorite to do this job. God knew how much, uh, God, God knew how she was, but we have to remember too that I really, really personally think Mary had a very close relationship with God to be able to bear his son. She must have. And she knew the scriptures. I'll read a little bit of that too. So, we will start. How would you feel being asked to carry the son of God? Whew, what a job. To have his son moving inside of you, ladies. You imagine that? Remember that. How, and, and I know I'm talking to ladies here, but men, try to imagine this. When a baby in your tummy moves, at the beginning especially, it feels like you have feathers in your tummy. It, it really feels like that. It feels like feathers. But as the baby grows, well, I mean, hey, it's only normal. He gets himself stuck in those ribs, and you're just like, oh, or, you know, he, he decides that he is going to have somersaults. And your stomach is just like, woo-hoo, going. And you're just like, how, how, how come? You know, this little thing in here, it's doing that. Anyway, so that's, that's how I, I, I would like to portray this. For, this is for Mary. Okay. And, and then, too, is all the time you're feeling, shouldn't you, she? It was only normal. She was, she was a human. She probably had some nausea. She probably, at times, was very tired. And she probably, at times, wondered, what did I get myself into? <laughs> yeah, what did I get myself into? So we're going to start. I'm, I'm going to be reading the story of the nativity. I'm going to be reading the story that Jesus, how, well, how Jesus was born, but let's concentrate on how, what Mary, Mary did, what Mary was all about. Actually, I have to remember, I was watching that. Mary's 16 years old, about, they say about that, maybe a little younger. But when I was looking at that and I saw this, well, the lady in the video giving birth, and then I looked at that little baby's face, and I said, oh my God, I was just, just, just 17 when my, first, my, my daughter was born. And I was looking at it, looking and saying, oh my God, she looks like a, she looks like a child. She was, too, in a way. She was a child with a responsibility to do what God asked her. So we're going to go into Luke 1. Verse, we're going to, verse 26 to 38. So I'll be stopping in some areas there. So now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of, the, of Galilee, a city of Galilee named Nazareth. A virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin, his name was Mary. I have come and have come in. The angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what matters of great greeting that was. And she was wondering, Who are you? And how come you're talking to me like that? And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, 
for you have found favor, favor in God. This was quite a shock for her, to have an angel speaking to you, like you're standing there and wondering. And plus, it was Gabriel. And I'll give you the definition of favored. Favored is providing preferential treatment, granted special treatment of attention. So she was provided a special treatment of God. She was a special, special for God. And, and you remember in all of this, you have to remember Mary was picked. She was picked especially for this, this work. And in, in Luke 1, verse 31, it says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall his name, and shall call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will call the son of the will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord will give him the throne of the father of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his mighty kingdom there will be no end. The angel is describing to Mary what Jesus is going to be. And, and you, you listen to that and you're just like, okay, you know, this, 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 this baby, this, this son of God, he, he's going to have quite a, quite a position in this world. So God told her that she was going to be the mother of his son. How special that she was being picked from all the women in the world. Can you imagine from all the women in the world? She was his favorite and for, for this very special assignment. And so we'll keep going in verse 34. Uh, verse, yeah, yeah, chapter 1, verse 34. So. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I don't know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also... That Holy One who is born, uh, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So, the miracle, we have to remember, he said that she was going to get pregnant by the Holy Spirit. But to me, I was reading um, commentaries and we were talking about, about being the Holy Spirit. They were talk, it was talking about the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit come. She was going to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. She was going to be shadowed with the, the glory, the Shekinah glory of God. Imagine that Shekinah glory is the same glory that God used when he talked to Moses. It was the same glory when God used to fill the temple when they dedicated the first temple. It was so full of glory in there that everybody just fell. So can you imagine you've got this big cloud coming? And plus, too, there's another, other places. I remember um, when the Israelites were being taken out of Egypt, and God said that he would guide them with a cloud by day, and fire by night. That cloud was God's Shekinah glory. That cloud was God himself protecting. So that cloud was God himself conceiving the baby. It was magical. I mean, how do you expect that? But you know, with God, everything is possible. And in all of this, she was um, okay. Oh, glory! Oh, and yes, too. That cloud of glory, glory appeared at tra transfiguration. I, I don't have the scriptures to quote there, but when when Jesus appeared to the three, uh, Jesus appeared to three disciples with um, with prophets, 
Anyway, Jesus is, and plus Jesus got us a change. That was the glory of God. So in verse 36, it says, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the, ma the maiden servant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. God provided for her. Um, how, he told her how God works in the impossible. You have to remember that her, her, her cousin Elizabeth was barren and she was old. She, to her, she I was no more. It was no more. She wasn't going to have a child. But she was pregnant. And it was a miracle and it was an impossible thing. So God gave Mary a proof of an impossible thing. A proof that she was old, she got pregnant, now you're, you, you, your turn, <laughs> type thing. It's your turn to have this baby, to have my baby. And it says here, and I got here, it says, a young unmarried girl who becomes pregnant risks disaster. She risks losing her Joseph, who she was engaged to be married, And, and she, could, she could have been stoned to death. She was shunned. She, her reputation was going to be destroyed. She would, people would be so, uh, the Jewish people were so judgmental. They had to, God's law says, the Jewish law says, if you're pregnant before marriage, you have to be divorced and then stoned to death. Poor thing. She, she was facing that. She was thinking of all these things inside of her. And plus, do you think, what do you think people were saying when she got, that she would tell people, I got pregnant, but not with a man. I got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And how man, how, 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 um, how weird. They would say, oh, she's crazy, man. How, you know, what the is she talking about being pregnant by the Holy Spirit? And plus, another kicker, she had, she was a virgin. It's even like, I mean, she knew, she said here that she didn't know a man for her to get pregnant, but God knew. But then people, what do you think people are going to say even more? Well, that's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell, but... That was the truth. Mary's faith in the Lord must have been very special for him to pick her among all the women. Her faith, her faith hung. She believed in God. She knew God. She loved God. He was special. God was special to her. So that's, that's why she said yes. But in the scripture, Mary knew because she, 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 she had faith, she had religion, she knew. She knew the prophetic word that they were waiting for. And the prophetic word is in Isaiah 7.14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a sign and shall call his name Emmanuel. It was in the scripture, but pil, pil, that, that she would be a virgin, she would conceive, but people did not believe that. People didn't believe that this is, was the time to, for that prophetic word to come forth. And in Isaiah 9, 66, sorry, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Mary did not anticipate the hardship that were coming. Um, 
I said that she had great faith. She, she didn't anticipate it. She, she, anyway, when she said, yeah, and after that, she probably said to herself, what the heck yeah, I get myself into? Because she had, no, really, let's put it this way, she had no time to think about this. You, the angel said, you are. You are going to conceive a child. He is going to be the son of God. Yeah, she could have said no, but she considered herself too a maiden. She was God's maiden. So in, in Luke 41, at 141, and it happened. We're talking now something extraordinary about Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But, but why is this granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greetings sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my room, I womb of joy, for joy. Blessed is she who delivered, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told to her by God. God knew that Elizabeth knew. So you see, with Elizabeth too at the same time, Elizabeth was a, an encouragement to Mary. She was there to encourage her, to build her up, to help her. Because she knew, she really felt it. She felt that that was the meeting with the Son of God, with Jesus. God knew that Elizabeth would understand and encourage her. She was so proud of seeing the mother of her Savior. Elizabeth and her child were filled with the Holy Spirit at that moment. You know, when, 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 when her baby leaped, Jesus was in, her, in, in Mary's stomach, and there was a transfer, because I'm sure Jesus had some Holy Spirit in him. And as a transfer, Holy Spirit in, 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 in Elizabeth. And I mean, we know that Mary Elizabeth bore John the Baptist. We know that, realize that the John the Baptist is a cousin of Jesus. And it was very, very special. For, I think from that point, John the Baptist was anointed with the Holy Spirit. But it was through Mary's obedience that he was able to be, because Mary had the Son of God in her. And, and one of them, her song, when Mary wrote this song, it was just like, to me, it's so, so special. And it's in Luke 41, 41. So Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, and hence all genera henceforth all generation will call her blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Mary looked at herself as not being very worthy to carry the Son of God. And how she was favored and going to be from generation to generation. She is favored and she will be favored forever and ever. And here, you, you see this, how she's magnifying God, how she's loving the Lord, how she's uh, caring. And, and, but then you see how, how lowly, how low she thinks of herself. Very low. Very, very humble woman. 
A young, no, young girl. Very, very. And see, it says here, Mary's going to be remembered from generation to generation. She's going to be remembered forever and ever. And it's true. Mary is remembered forever and ever. But Mary, if you read the story properly, Mary is not there. This is something some people might not like there, but Mary was not told that she was going to be God. God, like worship, that she was going to be doing miracles, that you could go pray to her and things would happen and everything like that. Mary knew she was not like that. And you see in the scripture where it's not, it's not there. It's not here that you, can, you have to worship her. It's not here. And her name, her name means exalted one. Wow. Well, that's quite fitting, eh? You're exalted. Your name means exalted one, and you have Jesus in you. So you're exalted. But here, Mary was engaged to be married. And that was quite, um, come on, how would I say that? It was, you had to re- follow those rules and regulations in those days. You had to follow the Jewish law. And, and we have here Joseph, her husband, her husband. Because she was engaged to him, we say engaged, but to them it was like married. And she was promised to him. She was already his wife, but they were not living together. So Joseph, uh, Matthew, Ma- Matthew 119. Then Joseph, her husband, being a man, and not wanting to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought through about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for what which is, <laughs> sorry, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit, but by the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets. It says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which is translated, Emmanuel is God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him to do, and he took Mary for a wife. And he did not know her until she had brought forth her first son, and he called him Jesus. See how humble Joseph was here. He wanted to divorce her, but he wanted to make it very peacefully, very secretly, because in those days when they divorced, they divorced some people, they were, um, uh, how would I say that? They were very vocal about it, about, about divorcing and everything, and they would be. So Ma- Joseph was such a humble man, and he was thinking of all this, and then getting married to this girl that's pregnant, but yet he didn't even know that she was pregnant with, Joseph, with Jesus yet, the son of Mary. But the angel appeared to him, and the angel said to him, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, is of the Holy Spirit. So he was reassured, and he knew by those words, those were God's word. They were his word. And he said not to be afraid. And he said about Mary, he encouraged her. He told her that she 
what, how special she was. And he believed God. He believed his assignment. Joseph did according to what the angel said. He was very a humble man. He broke the Jewish tradition, that's right, and took Mary as his wife, even though the custom, Mary, one, the cust, the custom was one year waiting period, and that had not passed. Uh, no matter what the social, he took Mary to the, no matter what the social stigma and the local, local gossips were going to be. See, he took her. He married her. It wasn't a year that the Jewish tradition had to. And in some commentaries, it says that he took her, and he took her somewhere to another village so that she would be protected. But it doesn't say here. But you realize that Joseph took her so he took her as his wife. He took her in his house. And he protected her. He was there to protect her. So when Mary and Joseph, now they have to travel. So when Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem, it was about, you realize, 100 miles. That was far, like 100 miles. They had to walk. He had to walk. They had to walk. Not sure if Mary has a donkey and all the Christmas stories, we see Mary sitting on the donkey, which actually makes a lot of sense, but it's not written in here. And, and the, the roads those days were not like paved like we are. They were rocks. They were rough. The roads were rough. You have to remember that's over 2,000 years ago. Yeah, they did have nice uh, roads in, in the cities and everything, but not all the way through. So, and, and, and that 100 miles, how many days do you think that probably took? How many days? And since she was pregnant, how many days? I'm sure it took at least six days, if not more. Average people will walk about 20 miles, 20 miles a day. So that would be five days. But Mary was pregnant, so it was much slower than the, all, those t all that time. So she, she walked with Joseph. They walked together. All the way through, Joseph protected her. So then you imagine Mary getting in labor. And they find no place. There is no place in the inn. In those days, inns were not like we were. Inns were a place where someone had made a special room or a room to invite people to come in, have people coming in. And, and it says, too, that, jo that, that the people that were living there, they had, well, see, because they, they had to be censused, I'll be probably reading that there. But the, the, all the people that were traveling to Bethlehem, all those people had to find a place to stay. All of them, probably, some of them had families. So what happened if they had families? Families took them in. They had no place. So it really, it turned out that they had no place. And the stables were often caved with a feeding trough, which is a manger, carved into the rock of a wall. Carved into the rock wall. The surroundings were dark, dirty. And it is showing the king of kings being born into poor and humble circumstances. Imagine. Think about it. You people that are uh, like us are, 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 stin are picky in, in cleanliness. You imagine you're, you're, you're yeah, you're, we're picky in cleanliness. So what's this? A stable? A stable is a barn. A stable is a place where they would put, they would put the animals to be protected at night. Mm -hmm. But it's said too that that time of year, the the flocks were not brought into the stable, because if they would have been all brought into the stable, Mary had nowhere, nowhere. So the some of the those those the flocks. Yeah. <laughs> they were 
outside. They were outside, so that Mary, at least, there was that, that she, would, she had room. She had room. I would not see myself having a baby in the middle of the night. Most likely, they say, some people say Mary was by herself. But then other people say she, there was someone there to help her. But imagine. And plus, those days, they didn't have those nice, comfortable beds like we have now. She was laying on hay. Hay. Like, I mean, she was laying on hay. Can you? Wow. What a, what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. Must have been itchy. Oh, yeah, you say that again. Must have been really itchy. <laughs> anyway, so, and, and here I, I'm going to the, the best birth announcement ever. Think about this. So in Luke, tw- Luke 8, 2.8, sorry, Dan. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone upon them, and they were greatly afraid. Well, of course, they probably thought those were... Or, what was happening, you know, probably thought there was ghosts in there. Because they did in those days. Some, some did in those days, they believed in ghosts. Off track, sorry. <laughs> and then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which will be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, our Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddled clothes, laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly praises. Multitude of voices singing, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards man. So it was when the angels had gone away from them in heaven, from them in heaven, the angels went to heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, let us know Let us go, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in a manger. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. So the angels went and told the shepherds. You have to remember, shepherds are lowly. Shepherds were lowly people. Shepherds lived alone in the middle of nowhere, in the fields, protecting their animals. Shepherds were having a rough life. Shepherds were not looked at good in those days. And the angels went to the shepherd to tell them about the, about this beautiful birth, about the Son of God being born. It, it's so, uh, so amazing, you know, you think of, of, of angels coming to you and they're singing and they're showing you the story. Actually, it's the song that most likely they wanted, the angels wanted them to sing when they went to the stable to see Jesus. And when they found him on a manger, those mangers were not beautiful, comfy little beds. Those mangers were made out of cement. Those mangers were troughs to feed, to feed the flocks. And we saw some of them when we were in, uh, in, in Israel. 
And, and, and the first time I, I saw that, like I may have saw that a while back, I was just like, oh my God. He was laying in something hard like that in cement. Yeah, probably there was a little bit of, a, 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 of hay. There was hay to protect, but I mean, hay is not like a comfy little mattress. And that was our God that was laying there. And the angel said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards man. They were glorifying the Lord. They were showing, they were telling the, the, the shepherds what they, the song that they wanted them to sing to Jesus. They, say, they wanted him to sing glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. Oh, we sing that. We sing that in Christmas songs. That beautiful scripture. And what is amazing in all of this? Okay, Mary kept all these things. Oh, sorry, Dan. Uh, verse nineteen. But Mary kept all these things and pounded them in her heart. Pounded them. She was meditating on all that had happened. How favored she was with the love, the care, and the way God was to her. She was, he was protecting her. Even though times were rough and everything, he was protecting her. He was there for her all the way through. And, and, and she would be like, how favored. You're sitting there, you're laying there. You're holding this little baby, and this baby in your arms is the Son of God. Wow, like, here I am, Lord. This is my assignment that you've given me, to take care of your son, your, this beautiful little baby. And I, and I took this here, I'm reading this from a uh, commentary. It says, Surely the shepherd told Mary and Joseph what the angels had said. Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart. Treasured means deeply reflected, keep in mind, and safely stored up in her. Safely stored up in her heart. And she thought about them. Mary had a lot to think about as she gazed upon the face of the tiny child. Gabriel had told her that the little boy would reign forever. The shepherd reported the angel's words, and he is the Savior Christ the Lord. As Mary then held this this tiny baby, she must have wondered at all that God was doing, what God was doing, and who her son would grow up to become. You know, your, your, her son was going to be, is, is God, is the son of God, but what would he become? become? Like, I mean, the song says, Mary, did you know? Did you know that your son would be the king of kings, the Lord of Lord? Did you know that your son was very special? that your son was going to do miracles. Did you know? I mean, this is just like, wow. Well, Mary had so much to ponder on. She had so much to think about of everything that had happened. And I I didn't um, didn't do uh, a study on it, but but when the, uh, I'll just make, go through it real quick. The other visitors that she had were very important too. But see, the thing is, what I wanted, I wanted you to know how things were when she, was, that when she gave birth. But then after, she had the shepherds that came. Shepherds came and only sang to her. But then she had the, the wise men. The wise men came from way, way. They, were, they said they were traveling. It says that that's them, they, they traveled over a year where they followed the star to come and see. The, to come and see. Can you imagine a year? A year of being on a camel and just like eating what? 
else, but they, we look at some stories and they only see, show the three kings. But in other places, it says, sorry, it says that there was, there was, there were like these guys were, were, were moving with a caravan. But we have to expect, how much food do you need? You know, like I probably bought food on the way, but I mean, how much desert did they, did they go through? But they had, they had the word, they had the star of, of, of God, the star, to follow. They were just like, wow. And places they were saying that they think that they, were, they had read um, about Daniel, about Daniel, what it, what it said about the star of David and what it said about where the star would lead them to the, the king of kings. So these guys did all that. Then they went, they stopped, and they went and talked to Herod to see where they were, where Jesus was. But Herod was so jealous, he was so afraid that he was going to lose everything. Because they, Jesus was going to be the king of kings. Jesus was going to be, they said, the leader of his kingdom. But to him, he thought that Jesus was going to take his place. And he was such a mean man. And then he told them, he says, okay, if, when you find them, let me know. Let me know so I too can go worship him. Well, I mean, hey, they love lying, eh? And, and so that's, that's what they wanted. He wanted. He wanted to worship him. Yeah, he wanted to go and get him and kill him. But instead, the, 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 um, the kings left another way. But in the meanwhile, the kings had brought uh, frankincense, myrrh, and gold. And it wasn't just a little bit there. We, we think, oh, just a little thing. No, no, no. It was gifts. It was big gifts that they brought to the king of kings. But anyway, uh, when they came, they gave that to Mary and Joseph, and they worshipped the Lord. But then they decided, forget this, we're going to go a different way. We don't trust that man, that king. But that king was so pissed off that he never heard about it. So he ended up killing all those babies. The babies up to, the babies that were born up to two years old that year. But Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a dream. Mary, pack Mary. Yep, let's go. They had no chance. He wanted her to go right away. There was absolutely no time because it said, pack up and go. And they left in the middle of the night. They left to go to Egypt. And, and the finances, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh, were finances to, to supply to them the times that they were going to be in Egypt. Because there, I mean, nobody knew, knew them. How do you expect? to do something to work when, some people, when they, nobody knows you. So that's, those finances were most likely, it's not written here, but were most likely to protect and to, for them to have a life, to be able to live. And we know our God. We have a God that's extravagant. So <laughs> they probably, they had a very good life. They did, they did. And they came back, Jesus told, uh, Jesus told um, Joseph a while back, you can come back now, you're safe. So anyway, so this is my, my thing, this is my, I don't know if it's about you have it, but it's my revelation of how special, how special she is, how special she was. And you know, we have to remember, she is glorified. Mary is glorified. Mary is talked about from generation to generation. That's how special she is. But she's not, she's not a God. She doesn't create miracles. She, Mary is the, the mother of Jesus, but Mary needed him to, to be her savior. Anyway, so Ma and Mary, she, she traveled with him. They, they went all over 
um, when, when they were doing, when he was traveling with the disciples, there's places where Mary was. She was there, she was looking, she was seeing what was happening, she was seeing what her son was doing. That's awesome, eh? You're there and you're seeing your son, it's like, you're seeing your son and he's creating mi miracles. This guy is seeing. This guy, his hand is being healed. This guy's, you know, is brought up from the dead. Amen. Wow, that's special. And that's how special Mary must have thought of her son. Amen. So anyway, I, I, I just hope this helped you. I just hope... Uh, so I tried, eh? Draw yeah, I just hope that draws you closer to the story of, of, of Jesus being born. I just hope it makes you a little bit understand more of, of the things that happened at this point. And how blessed we are to be able to celebrate his birth. It is like, I mean, wow. Jesus. Jesus coming as a, as a baby to be a son of man, to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Well, anyway, I just I want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that, um, that this Christmas, people are going to be thinking of how precious, precious, Lord, you are, but how precious to, how precious, the Lord was to Mary and to Joseph to be their, uh, their carrier of his son. So Lord, let's just, let's just ponder on that, like Mary pondered on the things that had just happened to her. And I thank you, and I just pray, Lord, everybody, to have a wonderful Christmas. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, Dan. Fini. Ooh, I did pretty good, 45 minutes. Ah.